Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing one of my first impressions videos where I'll be taking a look at Elementary OS version 0.4 Loki, which is based on Ubuntu 16.04. So just a bit of a disclaimer is that I am running this in a virtual machine and this distribution in particular, but distributions in general, don't run as well inside of virtual machines as they do on a proper full install. So Bear that in mind when you're sort of appraising this distribution. I decided to only do a, a bit of a brief um, overview of this distribution because it's based on Ubuntu 16.04, which I'll be talking about more on this channel uh, in the coming weeks. Um, there's not really much to say that wouldn't be said in an Ubuntu-based video. Today I'm really just looking at the Pantheon desktop, which is the desktop you see before you, uh, which is the flagship trademark um, desktop environment for the elementary OS. So, uh, just to uh, crack on, this is uh, yeah, Elementary OS 0.4 Loki, and this is of course the beta version, the full version is not, or the um, release candidate version is not out yet, so uh, uh, there may be a few bugs in here that you might not necessarily see on the final release, but all in all this should be a pretty good sort of example. Now as you can see straight off the bat that it looks really nice and that's particularly relevant because this is the kind of distribution that is really really quite focuses on, on the, the aesthetics. And that's kind of an issue when you're selling Linux to, to new people, to people from Windows or people coming from Macs. And I think this is what this distribution really is trying to capture. They're trying to make a um, like a like a, a a Mac OS of the of the Linux platform and you can see this here with the dock at the bottom and the applications menu up here. So these are some of the uh, applications I've got installed. I like the very, very simple menu where you've just got just got some icons and you've just got, uh, you know, you just scroll at the bottom there. Uh, the Thunar file manager is not um, part of the Pantheon desktop environment. I actually installed this, as you can see here, it sort of staggers open the window pretty, pretty horrifically there. Uh, but as you can see here, this is how GT, or this is how Thunar or a GTK2 typical GTK GTK2 app would look like, um, and it looks pretty good. There's a bit of um, gnarly stuff happening with the shadows, but for all intents and purposes, uh, I have found GTK2 and Qt apps to uh, work quite well. I believe. Uh, do I have any Qt? Yes, KeyPass X is a Qt app, and I installed that. Uh, yeah, key pass X here, and as you can see, the theming is consistent along Qt, GTK2, and GTK theme apps. And as you can tell from the client side decorations here, that it is a uh, a GTK3 based environment. Although you should be able to install any application and, and get away with it reasonably easily, you should it should look in place. Um, and as you can tell, just uh, just looking at this, this is the Epiphany browser. And as I understand it, the last browser to be included in the 0.3 release of Elementary was Midori. So they're definitely going for lightweight browsers. Uh, Epiphany does seem to make a significant amount of sense here. So this is the um, these are all the uh, this is the Wikipedia page for uh, Elementary OS. You can see this is the these are the versions of Ubuntu that each version of Elementary OS is based on. And of course, this is in DistroWatch. It's DistroWatch rankings over the past twelve months uh, is thirteen. Which is quite good. It's been it's been in the distro distro watch rankings quite high for quite some time now. And if I scroll down, so the releases have been going coming out since two thousand eleven. So it is a pretty new distribution, all things said. So it's always uh, and it's always been based on Ubuntu. So it particularly it is very user friendly. I do have to say that, and it's particularly user friendly because it you can just pick it up and you can you can go. The applications providing you can identify what you want to do from the picture or at least from the title. You do also have a search option. You also have the option to have a more traditional kind of menu here, which is uh, you know that that to me is a good example of where you take out all the stuff you don't need and you you're left with something that really is quite. Um, straightforward to use. And I really like this approach. It's not necessarily a distribution I'm going to be adopting because I am not the kind of user that elementary OS is geared towards. But if I were to set up someone else's laptop and I had to choose a Linux distribution to put on there, elementary would definitely be one of my running choices. And the reason for that is because it's not customizable. 
It, it means that people aren't going to accidentally drag the volume applet to the other side of the screen and forget what to do with it. It means that there is a standard layout so that all the graphical um, you know, step-by-step -step screenshot tutorials work quite well. It's a consistent theme and you don't have to worry about theming because that's just all taken care of you. It can't be messed up. Or, uh, you know, and there aren't options to change the theming, but a lot of people don't want that option, and that option just gets in the way. So it seems to get rid of a lot of these bells and whistles that the typical Linux user might take for granted, and the t typical Linux user might expect out of a distribution. But if they're not essential to doing basic tasks like office, you know, office tasks and and checking your email, then they're not included in this distribution. And I think that's really a good idea. It's a step on from GNOME. Um, and, and again, all very user-friendly desktop environment, just as um, user-friendly as, as, as GNOME, possibly even a bit more so because it does aim to, to hit on a few UI touchstones and, and help people ease into it a lot easier. But even though this is not a direct Windows uh, user interface and even not a direct Mac user interface, it's like it's trying to be a version between the two. Despite the fact that um, different buttons and different, you know, icons and whatnot are in different places, it's as easy as you can imagine to pick up and use. There really is nothing to it. It's literally this menu, their applications, their app center and their control panel. So let's take a look at the app center as well because you know people want to install new software onto the machine and if, if you you know if this is designed so that you could install it onto someone else's laptop and just let them work it out and let them get on with it, this is the kind of thing that they're going to have to go through to install new software. And this looks really nice. So this is the this is the app center. So you can install. Is there a couple of games you can install here? Yeah, and it's got all your games there. That's pretty good. That's pretty awesome. There you go. In yeah. So that's all it is. It's really just pretty. Yeah, I remember installing Thunar and, and Keypass X. Uh, so you've got the Kaja Dropbox, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's certainly not the the easiest app center I've ever seen. The uh, GNOME app center seems to be a little bit easier. But if, as, if you know the name of the program, installing it is just a piece of cake. Um, so you can install Abbey Word there. That works quite well with GTK3. So there's some... The App Store, very easy to use, very straightforward, very simple. If I go back to categories, I can check out, and these are all the installed ones. So you can update all, all at once, or you can update all the individual. So I've not seen that done very often, if at all, before. It shows you which applications to upgrade and whether or not you want to upgrade them. And this is actually a really good idea, because one of the big criticisms of Windows 10 is that it's always pushing these updates on you, especially and, and with other versions of Windows. Um, and to be honest, Linux isn't really that much different. If you're running a rolling distribution like I am, like Manjaro or Antergos or Arch or something like that, you're, you are expected to have most, if not all, of your applications at their newest version so that you can make sure all the bugs are fixed and you know they're the most stable versions. But that, of course, isn't always the case, especially with long-term uh, releases um, where, th you know, where things may... where different factors are at play. So it it you know it gives you a lot more control. I can't think I can think of only one or two um, situations. For example, if um, an upgrade to a particular program causes a breakage, uh, you might want might want to refrain from updating. Um, and it doesn't look like you can downgrade, which is expected in a way, I guess, because it is a scheduled release rather than a rolling distribution. But it does allow you to upgrade app, update applications individually. It just gives the end user a bit more control, which is good. This is a nice app store. There's no bells and whistles that you don't need. Points for that. Uh, and this is that, and that's sort of elementary OS in a nutshell, is that it doesn't give you anything that you don't need in order to do what are fundamentally very basic tasks. When I install um, a Linux distribution onto someone who wants uh, a Linux machine, uh, and I install it onto their laptop or desktop PC, um, it's it's nice to have a distribution that you can pick up and use. It's not too difficult to install new stuff. It doesn't have as, as good a, a front page as, say, the the um, Mate, the Ubuntu Mate um, software boutique. That's brilliant. That has you know descriptions and you know step by step process and all that kind of stuff, and that works really well. But this is a good um, a good option as well. So it doesn't, by the looks of it, have theming in the way, there you get to choose your, your web browser. 
you get to choose startup prop, uh, startup programs, all that kind of stuff. You get to link it in with online accounts, which is something that I don't tend to do. Oh, fast mail. That's, uh, that's interesting. I haven't seen that as a login before. But, you know, when your options are Google, Facebook, Yahoo, and Microsoft, you know, how many people are really going to be that enthusiastic to link any of those accounts with their desktop? But Fastmail is quite good. It might, um, I'd imagine it, it links in the calendar and the uh, in the mail apps, which can be quite good as well. It works really well on, on GNOME, I've seen, so I'd imagine it would be a similar situation to that. And their apps are generally quite basic, quite straightforward. This, this is just your, your regular old photo manager. Um, to be honest, I use a file manager to manage most of my photos and that kind of thing. And this is the calendar, lovely interface. All the interfaces are absolutely beautiful. Um, and I've got to say, all in all, pretty damn impressed with this distribution. It's nice to have something that you can just deploy onto a machine and just know exactly that it's not going to have too many bells and whistles. Because interestingly enough, when I do set up someone else's machine, one of the first things I do is actually remove software. So I find that distributions these days come with a lot of bundled software that a lot of people don't need. Um, and, and I guess, you know, and I, I guess we can all be critical of software choices in distributions, but uh, but yeah, the, one of the first things I, I do when installing a new distribution is often remove some of the default applications just to clean up the menus and make it a little bit user-friendly from that point of view. Um, interesting choice of the Epiphany browser. I do really like the Epiphany browser. It's one that I think is highly underrated. Um, it would be nice if it was a little bit more customizable, just a little bit more customizable, but um, but it is still pretty good. So get some tunes, yeah. So add music to the library. So these look like pretty basic applications, and that's kind of what you need in a lot of cases. If you just want something to deploy, straightforward, no questions asked, kind of very basic um, distribution that you can install on, a, you know, like you'd install it on a parent's computer if they just wanted to keep in touch with the, the kids and that kind of thing. Um, a great distribution. I am actually really quite impressed. I haven't run into any real bugs, um, despite that the Ubuntu 16.04 base has, has, has been criticized quite heavily for, for, for not being particularly stable. I think they've managed to, or at least it seems like they've ironed out a lot of those wrinkles pretty early on, uh, because I have uh, set up a few deployments of uh, Lubuntu lately uh, with you know, 16.04 versions of Lubuntu on some people I know's laptops, uh, which is a great laptop distribution because it just gets the most speed out of the device. And LXDE, once set up, is, is also quite user-friendly. You've just got a menu with the applications that you need and, and a pretty basic taskbar. So um, that aside, Elementary OS, uh, great distribution. You can just sort of install it and go. Uh, it's very pretty. If you, you know, if you want to yeah, and I think that's about it. It's a distribution that I get asked to review uh, from time to time. Um, so here it is. Uh, I'm quite happy with it. I'm really quite happy with it. I'm quite impressed. Um, I had no problems installing it. The install process was very straightforward, very easy, and, um, and, and, and using it is great. So it just strikes me as being very similar to Ubuntu GNOME uh, or that kind of feeling where it's just a very streamlined, straightforward interface, not really designed for power users, but it comes with a, a you know a decent suite of, of basic apps. And if you're just looking for some, you know, if, if, if the internet browser is going to be doing the bulk of the heavy lifting, maybe with a bit of email or office work on the side, this distribution is is really good for, for people new to Linux or people that just, just want a computer just to, to get up and get working and they don't even care what operating system's on it. So, give me your thoughts down in the comments section below. Also, it came, uh, just as a side note, it came with some great um, background wallpapers just before, I, just before I sign off here. I uh, For me, it's just an interesting touch. I just like, like this one. It's beautiful. Look at that. Some some amazing some some beautiful photography on the uh, oh, awesome nice one of the Eiffel Tower. Look at that, that's beautiful. So um, yeah, because uh, I'm used to 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 working with XFCE uh, interfaces quite a lot, and we've been staring at the same uh, twenty backgrounds for what seems like ten years now. But yes, yeah, so that's also just it's just an, it's, it's little touches like that that make me really warm up to Elementary OS. That they've taken the, just the little extra time to 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 sand down the the rough edges and and just to make a very sleek, very um, Mac esque um, user experience. 
and I think they have, for all intents and purposes, succeeded. This distribution, if I was not into Linux, would be amazing for me. It, it, it would be one that I pick up. Obviously, if you're looking for something customizable, um, you're going to want to look elsewhere. But this is great for the corner of the market that it's uh, that it's trying to hold. Um, and also, of course, a lot of people do criticize them for having such an aggressive donation uh, request page on their website where you can't even download it without actually having to um, to, to, to work through their donations page. Um, but it also, um, as I understand it, they also donate to like upstream projects for the software that they include in their distribution. So it's not, you know, all um, all collected for their benefit. And, um, I, you know, I don't have a problem with that. I think that's pretty good. It's nice that they're actually thinking about the money because the money is often the thing that, that stops a distribution from hitting the long-term stages of development. And as this is only been going since 2011, it seems, uh, this is still quite a new-ish distribution in the grand scheme of things. But um, with so much going on in Linux Mint, um, this could very well be something that actually takes the inside track for the most simplest and straightforward distribution. Who knows? Anyway, that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. And um, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.